All right, welcome back, you legends. Let's jump in and focus on a good team, the People Squad. We scored 939 last week, much better than what my team did. So we'll uh, we'll get to the the negatives soon. But let's start with the good one in in this squad here. And we started out with with Jay Braley as our as our main hooker. Picked up 78 and and had an amazing game. Got 50 tackles. Did everything right. I wouldn't expect scores this high, but he now is going to make a lot of money just with that one score alone. So you'd expect somewhere between 40 and 50. Closer to 50, it looks like, just with his involvement and, and how, how hard he worked. You know, even, even with them having a lot of ball and, and scoring a bunch of tries, he still managed 50 tackles and, and 80 minutes, which was awesome. And I'd expect that going forward. We'll see what happens with their team list if, if there's any changes, but I doubt that he would uh, lose any minutes. So that was a great start there. And then we moved to Angus Crichton, got 67 with a, with a try. Not a lot of traffic went down his side uh, with with them with the Roosters finding a lot of a lot of positives down down their right hand edge attack. So for him to get sixty seven was was great and and awesome for anyone who captained him as well. But we had him as the vice with Cleary's captain. We started with Watson, got fifty four, did really well, came on at five eighth in the end and and did a bit of everything, bunch of tackles, try assists, tackle blast, hundred meters. Awesome work for Watson. Hopefully he's not injured. They strapped up his ankle uh, partway through that game, but he, he, he soldiered on and, and did really well and got 54 and will start making plenty of cash. Matty Lodge, we all uh, know what happened to him. 15 and 18 minutes and then went down injured with the hamstring. And, and he's going to be out for two to three weeks, and I think he's the sell. He's not going to be a keeper with a 15 in his score now. He's, we want him to make a fair bit of cash, and he's not going to do that. So if you... If you can, yeah. You know, if you've got someone you want to trade him to, go for it now. If if not, and you've got some cover, then just chuck him on the emergencies and wait for a better option. But that's where we're at with him, so we're going to have to move him on. We got Fafita and Ricky. Ricky, we know what happened with him. Just not, uh, just didn't do a lot. 60 meters gained, 10 missed tackles, which killed him. So I wouldn't expect a game anything like that, and I wouldn't be trading him out if you if you're thinking about that, especially with a few of us having some issues with, with their edge, and, and that's a good thing with the people squad, with, with Crichton going to be out for the one week with the suspension. That's why he's got the dot there. We are we don't have to bring in any edge cover, so we can bring Tino back in for Crichton and, and leave him on the emergencies there. Lenny U, we could pop straight in for Lodge as well as, as a decent option, but we probably want to trade Lodge and, and use someone in that interchange, uh, not Tex, but yeah, to, to score closer to a 40. Fafita did really well, ran a fever all week and was in hospital for two days and still scored 60 and 70 minutes. So you'd expect close to 80 minutes and maybe even some better scores, which is pretty scary, you know, to get 60 and not do too much so and not be feeling great, but really awesome work. Cleary at 192 with the captaincy, so 96, just did everything on the field and, and a perfect captaincy option for our squad and, and every week going forward. Awesome to have that locked in there. Lockie Lamb, my worry for him and what you know something we saw across the whole weekend was was the halves position whoever was a dominant half really had an awesome fantasy game so except for the manly boys where with dce you know it's really struggling um obviously against a, a gun rooster side but mitch moses 67 hunt 71 flanagan 69 brown was not the dominant half exactly like lamb and got 36 mitch pierce dominant half 70 white not dominant half 27 Reynolds and Cody Walker both had sort of an even game, 39-36, but Fogarty, dominant half, did really well. Munster was more the dominant half, did score a try, though, um, and they kind of split the roles, and, and Pappenhausen scored most of their points. But that first game was really strange with our fantasy scores, uh, is what I'll say. Williams got 61, dominant half. Kurt Mann injured. Luke Keary, dominant half, is 60. Uh, Cleary, 96. Luai, 39, 4 and 30. Brooks was dominant, 64. Morgan, the dominant half. Cody Nicarima was dominant half. Yeah. Townsend, dominant half, 59. Obviously, uh, CHT did really well. But you get my point. Dominant half smashed at this game because the, the game's more free-flowing. There's more kick meters. They can get a much more, you know, line break assist. The, the try assist is, is coming on, obviously, very normal with the dominant half. But that lack of kick meters and hands on the ball, I think... Really hurt, really hurt these guys in the first round. I expect Lamb this to be sort of his his base, and, in, and you're having big big improvements from there. But his chances of averaging in the 50s, I, I think, is very slim. I still think he's a good chance to 
score a 45, 50 every second week and then maybe have a, a lower game in the 30s, but they didn't go down the left-hand side at all. So I think once they find a slightly easier right-edge defense so, so they're, for their left edge to attack on, I think that they'll they'll do a little bit better and he'll get a few more try assists and, and you know, a few more touches and runs and maybe a few tackle breaks and offloads, etc. But yeah, something to think about is if the real, the dominant halves in the game absolutely smashed it this week, so all, all got over 50, which was really good. So something to think about. Kelly, he happens to have a, a cooked hand, so he's out for at least three weeks, they reckon, which is a little bit of an issue. All we could do is bring, you know, trade him out for for Tessie New, like, sorry, just put him onto the emergencies, or we can trade him out completely and, and use the cash to, to bring in, you know, someone like a Momorowski or these types of players that got a bit of cash to make it that are about 100k or 80k cheaper and use that cash to upgrade Lodge. So that's something to think about when we go through those trades after team list, but Kelly only got got the 30, but Titan's really bad. So if that's his base, then that's really good. And he should be able to get 45, 50, 60 if, he, if he's scoring tries. So yeah, unfortunately it didn't go as well this week. And we've got a few guys like that in the team. And that that's kind of what stopped us from you know being ranked anywhere in the sort of you know 2000 and you know, getting closer to the top thousand there, but uh, Avery Lowe we started with as well, got 20, so had a decent first half with 17 and then didn't do much at all, didn't even run the ball, so if he once he starts to run the ball a little bit, get a few attacking stats, I think he, he'll he come good and, and average somewhere in the 30s. Teddy Papenhausen and Laurie, you couldn't really ask for a better wing fullback unless you, you, know, you had uh, Luttrell instead of Teddy, but awesome work for those guys, not much more to say, they all did a great job. Tino is 41. With him, just didn't get. I feel like that's like his base game. He didn't. He did, I don't think he played very well and and looked maybe a little bit underdone. I don't know what you guys think. He just didn't look as sharp as he you look at some of these guys like Off and Gowie and all that. They were really ran the ball hard, had good footwork, and I think Tino looked really tired early. Like 15 minutes in, he looked gassed. Looked a little bit better in the second half, but I just think it really hit him, and he he didn't have much at all in that first half. So I expect a fair bit of improvement from him, and also the Titans. So. You know, people are thinking about trading him out for an off end or these types of plays. And, you know, just think of the reason you bought Tino. You, you're like, well, he's at least 7 to 10, 15 points undervalued. He could turn into a keeper, have some massive scores with some attacking stats. So don't rule him out so fast. He's going to go straight into our starting side next week. Little with 51. Again, you're looking to, to have no one on the bench with him, and he should score up near the 50 mark most weeks. Had a lot of missed tackles, so hopefully he can improve that. Turpin. Same deal, did really well, and, and a lot of people have him as starting hooker, and that's going to be great for your squads. Tex Hoy didn't do much at all and got 28, so we can take that. There's still a chance that he makes some good cash, but you want a, a 45 to 50 over the next few weeks so he can start getting that ball rolling before Ponga comes back. We probably will try to not have him as a player in our squad this week, you know, with, with Lenny doing so well. So Lenny will probably move straight into that starting side or onto the interchange, and did awesomely well, just over a point a minute for Spencer, and look really strong. And, and that that mold of player in this game, when when the uh, the big forwards are tired and he's got a little bit of footwork and he can get the odd tackle break and offload and, and just get a lot of meters across the game, I think he was great and will make some good cash. Farmer Silly didn't get many minutes, which was annoying for for anyone out there that, that picked him up. You know, over over Alvaro. Unfortunately, we ended up with you know, ended up picking him over. Over, over Alvaro, I think, for cash reasons, but also we had a few people thought he would do, you know, get a few more minutes and do a bit better. But scored well in, in his time on the field at, at a point a minute, but you'd hope for a few extra minutes going forward, and we'll see if he gets that. Tessie New, 28, did well without scoring, without doing anything tacking wise, and, and they have a decent lineup, uh, decent matchup this week. What we got against? against? Against Gold Coast. So, I think yeah, a few more chances to score some tries this week compared to against the Eels. And Stefano got the uh, got 33 minutes and, and got a head knock. So we'll see what kind of minutes he gets. But his PPM previously was as it was at one or just above. So hopefully he gets a little bit more than 23 and starts getting his, his price rolling. But there you go. That's our thoughts on the on the people squads. A few guys to think about getting rid of. Any of our top guys is definitely not. But Lamb was a bit concerning. We got Kelly injured. We got Lodge. So Kelly and Lodge will be our most important ones to go with this team. Um, but there we are. Good, good start with the people squad. I'm happy with where we're at. All right, guys. <coughs> this next one. My squad. Oh, 12,000. If you want to 
skip the next two minutes. You don't want to hear my rant as to, to what I've done. Then, then please do so, do so. But if you want to have it, sit back and have a bit of a laugh at, at my misfortune, then hang around for the next few minutes uh, before I go through my squad. But can we just start with Damo Cook? Seriously. I already blew off about him a little bit, but he seriously cooked me this round one. I know it might change and he's probably going to get back to normal, but I was so tempted to, to go McCulloch for one. So there's 30 points that I've, that I've lost. But that would have allowed me to spend a little bit more elsewhere. I would have got Momorowski, which was an extra five points, but nothing crazy. Yeah, you know, I could have upgraded someone like Lodge or a Welch. I was thinking, you know, Twal with some options. There was a few things I could have done. I was thinking, you know, Teddy down the bottom here could have spent that money on. There's a lot of things I could have done differently if I didn't pick Lodge, and I just so frustrating. Like you put all that put all that effort in and. I hope a lot. I hope not that many people picked him because of my my thoughts. And you know, a lot of the guys that I that I mentioned, like Townsend, um, Fogarty, I spoke about these guys all off season, uh, and and then just never put them in my side. So really, really frustrating on on that side of things. And you know, there's not a lot you can do. I'm not that crazy amount behind when you look at you know the people's squad was nine thirty nine. It's only 40 points behind, and that's that's 8,000 ranks in the first round. So don't, if you're someone sitting in a similar boat, you know, scored mid mid 800s or late 800s, and and a bit annoyed with the team, what you can do is just is just spend a few trades in those first few rounds, just trying to get the team right. So obviously, there's a few things that haven't gone too well. Lodge got injured, but you know, Shaq comes out and, and scores under his average. All these types of things happen, right? Lamb didn't score as much as we wanted to, but. There's not that much you can do, and, and just and just pick it, pick up where you where you where you are, and, and make a few trades, and, and fix it up, and and you should be able to get back in back in pretty quick. And I had a pretty bad start last year again, and ended up in you know 850th. So just something to think about with with these types of guys. But yeah, Cook didn't go so well, and and against Manly, let's hope he does a lot better this week. But I got Lodge got injured, Watson Welsh Welsh kind of did what we need to. He bombed a try over the line, so could have had a really big score, but didn't. That's fine. Ricky, Triton, fine. Lamb, we spoke about. Clear is captain, which which saved me, obviously, from, from a bad week and a, and a nice bench there. But Opacek, I was really happy with. I feel like he missed out on a turnover tackle, which would have got him 39 without any attacking stats, which is great. Avrilo, I might start with Tessie New next week. For some reason, I decided to pick Croker over Lenny. I wanted a little bit more, uh, a little bit of cover in the half position and because I had a lot of mids and... That was annoying. He might not even play this week with a chance of Cade Gus going back. But yeah, Pat Laurie, two of us to Sheck. Sheck didn't do too much, and that's going to be his base. And then any attacking stats on that. He only had three tackle breaks. So a few more tackle breaks and, and uh, some try scoring or try assists will be great for Sheck. Bench was really good. Little Rayleigh, Farmasuliawi. I can't even say it. Jake Turpin um, all did really well. And we got some money makers in Alvaro. Testing you down there, so they did well. We're looking at guys like Croker who underperformed and and just won't be very good in a manly side. Lodge is the trade out target, obviously. Um, I need an edge this week. So people like Fumayano, uh, a chance that if he gets that lock spot again, there's a good chance I just pick him up straight from there. Uh, he's, he's about what 360 at this stage, so I'll be able to straight swap him. Um, and that's probably the only other trade, the only trade I could make. At this stage, I don't think. I'm not sure if I would have enough to go Croker then to Leniu, but again, that's just uh, taking out some more cover in the halves. But if he's not playing, then then he's not really covering anything, in, is he? But yeah, there you go. 897, nothing crazy, but yeah, it's a bit frustrating when you have guys that really underperform. You know, almost 30 points underperforming. Same thing, 25 points. Lamb underperforms. Check underperforms. So I got four guys that really go undone and that's all you need to, to have a pretty poor week so yeah back to the drawing board and and we'll uh we'll push forward from here and and work it out and, and do well but our last one we'll just roll through i did my alternate team and, and this team missed out on someone like lodge but they also missed out on brayley and cleary so yeah brayley missing out on him in the interchange was annoying when I probably could have just picked someone else instead of Lamb and, and found some, or, you know, whatever, Twile maybe, or Welsh, and just found some extra cash to, to put him on the interchange, but didn't do that, and I'll have to bring him in and rectify that one because he's going to make a fair bit of cash. 
Uh, but McCulloch, wanted to start with him. He is kind of my guys that I was interested in. McCulloch, Twal, Brooks all did well. Momorowski I wanted. He also did well. Teddy. So all those guys were perfect, but just missed out on Cleary as captain to do really well. So a score of 9.15 uh, gets us 8.7.9.7 eight, seven, seven in the overall ranks. And and yeah, had to play had played Croker instead of Lenny, thinking he'd do well with an 80 in a roll. But yeah, we, we didn't get that. Crichton as captain was fine. So... In this one here, we can just rotate Ricky back into the edge position, leave Crichton on the bench, bring bring Lenny U up, and uh, and try and get Brayley in. So my issue with this is who do I bring in? Who do I trade out for Brayley? My thoughts are Welsh. You know, Brayley's going to make some good cash. I've got plenty of mids, and that could rectify that one there and give me a, a fair bit of cash to upgrade elsewhere if I wanted to. Not sure what there is at this stage to upgrade, but you know, maybe it's a Croker or. Or something like that to to trade out, but we'll have a look into that. But I'm thinking Welsh is the only way I'm going to be able to get Brayley. Welsh has a little bit of money making potential and and is a nice solid player to have in that mid position. But I have Lenny who could score, you know, mid 30s to 40 and felt uh, Welsh, you know, 45 to 50. So not losing too many points and getting another really good scorer to pop onto the bench in Brayley. So I think that's a, a pretty decent option. But there you go, guys. That's the that's the teams. Let me know what you think of those and uh. You know, what you think, what trades you think the people squad or my, my own squad there and, and then this alternates team uh, should make. I think this alternates team is going to take a little bit a little bit more of a risk and uh, throughout the trades, uh, throughout the, the rounds and, and pick some of those guys that, that you know, are just, just YOLO it and, and, and have a go. So uh, the my normal team, we're going to be making sure we're very calculated in those decisions and, and making the right ones. But if you enjoyed this, guys, I said it's free to hit that like button. That's the best way to support this channel. Uh, and hit subscribe if you're new. But hope you enjoyed that. See you guys.